turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Verse 35 to 38. Matthew chapter 9, 35 to 38. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. The greatest evangelist of all times is Jesus. Shout amen. He is the gospel. He himself is the good news. And the Bible says he went about cities, villages, synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Gospel means good news. Gospel needs good news. And the word evangelism comes from a Greek word evangelio, which means good news. So basically, the purpose of Jesus to come on earth was to become the good news and to spread the good news. That was his purpose, why Jesus came on earth. He came with the good news. And you know, the world needs good news. The world doesn't need any more bad news. There's enough bad things happening around us, but the world needs good news. How many of you agree with me? Shout amen. amen. The world needs good news. And the time when Jesus came, he went about cities. If he was here, he would have gone from Dubai to Sharjah to Abu Dhabi to all the cities and he would have also gone to all the villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. Verse 36, but when he saw the multitudes, everybody say multitudes. I was uh, discussing with uh, Annie and Terence and Rosalind as we were coming. You know, if there are seven plus point five billion people in this world. How many of you think are born again Christians like you and me? 10%. How much? Only 10% are born again like you and me. Only 10% of Christians are born again in this world. How many are nominal Christians who go to uh, some church but once in a way, the way I used to be before? I used to go to church two times a year, Christmas and uh, Good Friday. So we are nominal Christians, Christians by birth, Christians by name, and uh, having Christian parents, but we are not so attached to God. We don't have a very close relationship. We love God. Those are 25% of the people of the world. So if there are 100 people, 10 people are born again, they, they confess their sins, they have repented, they have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, and they have given their life and they are baptized in water, and most of them are baptized in the Holy Spirit also. But 25% of them are nominal Christians. But let's give a grand and say 35% of the people are all going to heaven. 35% of the people, let's assume that they one time or other given their life to Jesus and the Lord is so kind, he's taking all of them to heaven. What happens to the remaining 65% of the people today? I'm talking about people in India, people in the other parts of the world, people who follow other belief systems, what's going to happen to them? 
today if the world is destroyed i tell you i i don't want to tell you i want to tell you what jesus has written let's go to john chapter 8 okay when he came john chapter 8 and uh, we'll take verse 35 onwards john chapter 8 i'll tell you not 35 just a minute Twenty three, verse twenty three onwards, John, and he said to them, "You are from beneath." I'm talking about the people from sixty five percent of the world. He's telling them, "You are from beneath, and I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world." And he said, "Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am He," you will die if this 65% of the people doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is lord and savior there's no other way to eternal life than through Jesus he says if you do not believe that i am he if you just believe that i am a prophet you'll not go to heaven you'll die in your sins so 65% of the world population today if the world ends will not reach eternal life that's the statistics today then he said next who are you jesus said to them just that i have been saying to you from the beginning next i have many things to say and to judge concerning you but he who sent me is true and i speak to the world those things which i heard from him 27 they did not understand that he spoke to them of the father then jesus said to them when you lift up the son of man when you lift up the son of man then you will know that i am he and that i do nothing of myself but as my father has taught i speak these things when you lift up the son of man this is one of the things that we want to do lift up the son of man lift up the son of man not the son of god here he says son of man when you lift up the son of man then you will know that i am he then i do nothing of myself but as the father taught me i speak these things let's go back to matthew and then i'll hand over the mic let's go back to matthew chapter 9 where we left yeah so he jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of sickness and disease among the people 36 but when he saw the multitude he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd and next he said to the disciples the harvest truly is plenty but the laborers are few if he came today jesus came in his physical body today he would say this 65% of the world is moving around like sheep without shepherd and god would have compassion on this 65% of the people whether they are muslims or buddhist or hindus living in india the harvest is so good so plentiful but the laborers are few harvest is plentiful laborers are few it's my heart's desire and my vision that every one of you will become a laborer preaching the gospel it's my innermost desire that each one of us this is our co responsibility this is the heart of god god wants everyone that 65% to know 
Jesus Christ to accept him as Lord and to be saved. Look at what is happening in India. Don't get scared. This is the time for the harvest. Tell your neighbor, this is the time for the harvest. Tomorrow, God willing, I'll fly to Delhi. Yeah, in a few days, I'll also be in West Bengal. So this time, we are visiting two more nations, two more states. We finished Odisha. We finished Andhra Pradesh. Guess how many new pastors were ordained? Laborers in the vineyard were ordained just by a few days' visit in Andhra Pradesh. More than 300 laborers. Now, it's my desire that in the next two years, we raise up at least 200 to 300 leaders, laborers in God's vineyard to go out and preach the gospel. Not just in the cities, but also in the villages. I was just looking at the statistics. If 35 people are sent from one church to another place, most of them are going into the cities. Out of 35, only one go to the village. Only one go to the village. So the village outreach with the gospel is so poor. And 65% of the world population is perishing. We cannot afford to sit quiet anymore. We need to rise up and preach the gospel in whichever way possible. Whichever. We have to raise laborers. If we can raise 200 to 300 laborers per state, and we have 29 states, plus I was talking to Pastor Hazlitt in Goa, there are eight union territories. Just, if you just add this 37 places to 300, we'll have seven, 8,000 laborers working for God in the next three years. It is possible. How many of you are ready to pray? Amen. It's, they have enough bad news. They need the good news. Good news is reconciling man, nations to the living God. He died so that this world will have peace. Peace will not come out of talks. And it's our birthright and our core responsibility as a church to spread the good news. And you should start with your ICOS list, with your contact list you have to spread the good news wherever you are. And we want to get into the depths of that. And I told uh, Prophet, train us, teach us. I want to learn more. I was just doing some research last one week and I was so, so moved by the Holy Spirit. The greatest evangelist of all time, whether it is one-to-one -one public, is Jesus Christ himself. He is the good news and he was the best evangelist of all times. Give a big clap offering as a welcome and lead us into a time. We love you. I'm going to be sharing with you uh, a message that the Holy Spirit just poured on my heart this morning. There was something I wanted to share with you that was so exciting and I was in, in, that, in that atmosphere of excitement and the Lord said no there is a specific instruction I want to give to my people it's a prophetic word to most of you that are listening or watching or are here it's a word for now it is the now word it's a rima to most of you here and you need to receive it as the Holy Spirit specifically speaking to you amen so thank God for grace of flexibility to change and receive the heartbeat of the Father for his people. Amen. Father, thank you for grace to deliver your word as you have stated. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell the next person, Christ is the best choice. Tell another person again, Christ is the best choice. Is the inexhaustible nature of God's word. God's word is inexhaustible. 
just when you think you've done justice to the scripture, just when you think all the nourishment of the word is out, the Holy Spirit opens another lap. He shows you another thing that you didn't take note of in his word. And he draws this honey of his word out of the rock, which is Christ. He draws the secrets out of Jesus and shows it to you and it's amazing. It's tasty and exciting. Most times you want to keep it for yourself, but it bubbles up until you need to pass it on. Luke chapter 8. We'll read from verse 40 to 43. Just three verses. Luke chapter 8, verse 40 to 43. Luke chapter 8, verse 40 to 43. Can we have the NIV? Thank you, Jesus. Verse 40, not 14. 4 0, verse 40. Luke 8, 40 to 43. Three verses. Just three verses. Now, when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. For they were all what? Expecting him. Tell the next person again in crisis, Christ is the best choice. Tell the next person, Christ is always the best choice. In crisis, he's the best choice. Amen. So Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Now I want to ask a question. How many of you have expectations? You have some expectations. It's a natural phenomenon that at any time in life, we have some expectation. And I've realized that expectation is a very powerful force. Expectation is a very powerful word, force. Tell the next person, expectation is something you should not joke with. Tell him it's a very powerful force. It's a very powerful force. Expectation is a very, very powerful force. And it's a human phenomenon. Human beings have expectations. At times the expectations are good. At times they are not good. But it's expectation. And because it's a powerful force, it delivers results. Expectations deliver results. It delivers results. If your expectations are positive, it will deliver results. If your expectations are negative, it will also deliver results. Expectations are invitations. Tell the next person, expectations are invitations. So anytime you expect something, you are actually inviting that thing. It's a natural phenomenon that believers in Christ must wake up to. That what you are expecting is what you are inviting. They are invitations and they deliver results. It could be good or bad. But expectation is a very powerful force. And it delivers results. Here, their expectation was for Jesus. They were expecting Jesus. Not junk, but Jesus. And guess what? Jesus came. Tell the next person, your expectations will deliver results. So be careful what you expect. Yes. Job said, what I feared the most has happened to me. It means he was expecting. It was something that he was wrestling with within. It was an expectation. Then in the Psalms, David said, I am convinced that I will live to see and enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. It was his expectation. It was fulfilled. Expectations would not fail. They would deliver results. They expected Jesus. And Jesus came. He's been ministering all night. He was on the lake. He's still a storm. He had performed miracles here and there. And the natural phenomenon is he's very tired. He, he's taking rest. He, can, he will not show up. He will not attend this meeting. 
But the power of expectation, these people were expecting and he came. He came. Now, what is expectation? I wanted to write it down. It's a positive anticipation for a better outcome. Expectation is a positive anticipation for a better outcome. Everybody say a positive expectation or a positive anticipation for a better outcome. For a better outcome. So it's this, it's this drive in you that anticipate a positive outcome, a better outcome. So the condition you are in is not permanent. Why? Because when you have expectation, you expect the condition to become better. It's an anticipation. You are anticipating that few minutes from now, few days from now, few weeks from now, few years from now, this condition is going to change. And I told you, expectation is an invitation. Everybody say expectation is an invitation. Yeah. So if you are anticipating for a better outcome, so shall it be. So shall it be. And if you are anticipating that things will go worse, I'm sorry for you. But expectation is a powerful human force. It's a force that has, is powerful like the force of gravity. These are physical realities that Christians must know. That there is a force on this planet called the force of expectation. And when you expect something over a period of time, you are inviting that thing and it will come. Thank God these people were expecting Jesus. Wow. If your expectation is not fixed on Christ, disappointment is inevitable. Some of you are still sleeping. If your expectation is not focused on Christ, fixed on Christ, you need to prepare for crisis. Disappointment is going to show up one way or the other. Because Christ never fails and he does not change. He's the constant in life. And he's the constant in goodness. He is always good. Always good. And unchanging. So when your expectations are fixed on him, all it takes is time, the right results will emerge. Can you say amen? amen. So our expectations, our anticipation must be focused on Christ, fixed on Christ. Yes, at times in the journey of life, you meet very nice, good, beautiful, parted people who have the capacity to do a lot of good things for you. But my advice is make sure you redirect that expectation and make sure it is fixed and anchored in Christ. Because if it is in Christ, you are guaranteed a very beautiful result. But if it's not in Christ, you need to prepare somehow, some way for disappointments. The person will say, circumstances beyond my control. Something somehow can go wrong and your expectations can be dashed or disappointed. But they were expecting from Christ, expecting Christ, and Christ showed up. I want to encourage you this morning that regardless of the circumstances that life is chancing out or throwing out, if your expectation is on Christ Jesus, you are guaranteed results. Amazing results, exceptional results. Amen? You are guaranteed an exciting outcome. Amen? Tell the next person, be careful of your expectations. They are very powerful force. Tell the next person, expectation is a very, very powerful force. Please, I want you to write this down. Expectations sets the stage for exceptional experiences. Expectations sets the stage for exceptional experiences. Expectations sets the stage for exceptional experiences. It sets the stage.
for exceptional experiences. In any situation, condition you find yourself, if you check your expectations, your expectations is going to announce to you that soon that situation will increase. It will be exceptional. That situation will progress in intensity. That situation will inflate or become big or more exceptional results. And this works for positive and negative. It works for the positive, that's good, and it works for the evil. If your expectations is that a little sickness you have is going to kill you, write your will, it will kill you. Set your house in order. And doctors understand this. At times, my wife Becky will, will tell me certain things like, somebody comes to the hospital with a little ailment, just a little condition. And they, they give the person all the medication and sadly the person dies. And then another person comes with complex problems. And even they are, they are, they are like, oh, this is the last day. And that person can stay in the hospital for a year and still growing strong. And most times, they are able to overcome and bounce back. And she was asking me, I said, you need to check the kinds of people that visit them. What is the content of the things they say to the person? Because all of this is either going to build hope or break down hope. Because when hope is gone, Satan has a free day to steal, kill, and destroy. So when your expectation is always negative, you need to report to the nearest spiritual station, which is the church, for a jump start, for help and assistance. That's why it's good to meet like this to hear God's word. Because whilst we're hearing God's word, negative hope, toxic expectations and anticipation is being dealt with. And good anticipation is being built. Because when your expectations are good, it's an invitation. And ultimately, it sets the stage for exceptional what? Experiences. Please, I'm very sorry at times how I present the word of God. At times, my mind is not just on you here, but on thousands of people who will hear this tape when I'm dead and gone. And most of them don't think like you. Some of them are well structured in the corporate world. So at times I have to use words that are corporate. At times I forsake religious terminology. And at times I put things in boxes in such a way that it's logical, reasonable, and you are able to see the sense in it. So forgive me if I don't sound so religious. And it becomes boring to some of you. Some of you, it puts you off. Anytime I start on that path, it's like we didn't come to church. <laughs> it's like a seminar. I'm sorry. You can't be selfish. You need to think big. You need to think of many who will never come to church. And most people who don't even see the sense in reading the Bible, hence to explain it. So forgive me for not being an ordinary preacher that will come and shout and do all the semantics. Forgive me for keeping it very simple and practical and sensible without using religious jargons. Tell the next person, prophet says forgive him. Tell the next person, set prophet free. Have mercy on him. Amen. So, expectation will set the stage for experience, for what? Exceptional experiences. So, if you have a good expectation, you are actually setting the stage for exceptional experiences within that sphere of what you are expecting. If your expectation is not good, it's toxic, it's evil, you are actually setting the stage for a higher dose of what you are expecting. Experience is very generous. Uh, expectation is very what? Generous. Everybody say expectation is generous. It will always deliver results. <laughs> it will always deliver results. It won't fail. It's very powerful. 
It's a powerful force. Very powerful. They were expecting from Jesus. They were expecting Jesus. And Jesus showed up. What are you expecting? Ask the next person, what are you expecting? Ask her again, what are you expecting? Ask him, this week, what are you expecting? This month, what are you expecting? Tell the next person, in this month of March, what are you expecting? Ask him, what are you expecting? Look at him, say, I hope it's something good. <laughs> He's acting as if he didn't see you. Tell the, look at him, eye to eye. Tell him, I hope you are expecting something good. Something wholesome. Something uplifting. Something good. Amen? Because expectation is very powerful. Expectation is very powerful. So let's go to Luke 8 verse 40. Luke 8 verse 40. When Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him for they were all expecting him. Your expectation must be fixed and anchored on Christ Jesus. You should always be expecting Jesus to show up. Expect Christ-like experiences. Christ-like encounters. Christ-propelled events and circumstances. Christ-like outcomes. We were coming to church and the calls were coming everywhere. The traffic is so bad and immediately I counted it. Uh, where's brother Danny and sister Julie? I said, no, we have traffic grace. You heard me say that? Brother Danny, can you stand? Sister Julie. I said, we have traffic what? Grace. And immediately I said that another call came with a more a gruesome explanation or a, a gruesome details about the traffic. That is life. The enemy will always consciously or unconsciously give you reasons to lose your hope. To give up your expectations. But you need to constantly fight back and resist that force. So I kept countering on the phone. I said, no, don't worry. Relax. We will be there. We are there. I even used the word we are there. We are in church. Don't worry. On every side. But the traffic is very bad. And that is life. At all times you see the junk coming. And you have to hold on to your Jesus. Tell the next person when you hear the junk. Hear Jesus. Tell the next person hold on to Jesus. And resist the junk. Amen. That's how it works. It's a constant battle. And within a few minutes we were here. Within a few minutes. Because expectations will not fail. My expectation is that I will be on time, will relax and go through God's word, will build up positive hope, godly hope, and the Lord will show up in our lives and bless us. So all this traffic squabbles and all this traffic ministry, it's not going to have me. It's not going to change my posture. I was relaxed, just praying in the spirit and enjoying the Lord. But some of you in your heart right now, you still see rain. Though the rain has stopped yesterday, you still think it's raining. Most people did not come to church today because they think it's still what? Raining. And for your information, they have received this information somewhere. Even the forecasters will announce that it will be two days. So even if it stops in one day, in their inner being, it's still what? Rain. Tell them the message, so wake up and smell the coffee. It's no raining. It's not raining. It's shiny. It's a shiny day. Beautiful day. That is life. What do you expect? What are your expectations? What are you anticipating next week, this week, end of this month? You are anticipating they will kick you out of your house. You've invited an ejection. And it will come. You'll be ejected. Because expectations are powerful forces. They will deliver results. 
So don't joke with expectations. Anytime you see that within you, you are anticipating something negative. Don't take it for granted. I'm talking to believers in Christ. Because that anticipation of that negative thing is an invitation for Satan and demons to enter and download their contraband goods, their negative things. Because you have an enemy who hates you. He came to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. And the Bible says we should give him no place. Why? Because the human being have capacity, though you are saved and sanctified, you have capacity to open the door for Satan and his demons to visit you. And one of the ways we open the door is building ungodly expectations, unhealthy expectations, toxic expectations, expecting something negative to happen. Are we okay? Can we continue? Okay. I hope I'm not boring you. <laughs> Let's go Luke chapter 8 verse 41. Luke chapter 8 verse 41. Then a man named Jesus or Jairus, a man named Jairus, a synagogue ruler came and fell at the feet of Jesus. Jesus' feet pleading with him to come to his house pleading with him to come to his house. This man called Jairus is a ruler of the synagogue, but he had expectations. Amen? Your status in society should not drown your godly expectation. The fact that you have a good standing in your office, in your tribe, or in your family should not drown the godly desire and expectations you have within. Because at times what we do is we cage our godly expectations. He says, I'm a ruler, yes, I have a title. I'm respected in society. But I have a desire for Jesus. I have an expectation in Christ. There is a craving in me for Jesus. He had expectations. But his expectations was fixed on Christ. I think I have told you and I will announce again. Make sure your expectations are fixed or anchored in Christ Jesus. At all times, fix your expectations on Jesus. Because people change, but he does not change. He is good at all times. Amen? You fix your expectations on him. So he had expectations. And the thing about expectations is that it's a thought. Expectation is a thought. And over, over a period of time, it becomes a mindset, which means it's gained constancy. Expectation is a thought. Everybody say expectation is a thought. Just a thought. But if you allow it, it will become a strong, dominant concept. It will be the posture of your inner being, which is a mindset. So it starts with just a thought. If you entertain it, it will now gain strength. It's like concrete. Like you pour concrete and it hardens up. becomes a mindset. And then it flows out of your speech and choices. So it starts as a thought. Expectation starts what? As a thought. Then it progresses to what? A mindset, the posture of your inner being. And then it reveals itself in speech, what we say, and in what? And in choices, the decisions we make. So, expectation is a thought. It's just a thought. It comes into your coconut. You're going to get cancer. You, you will have cancer. You will have cancer. It's just a thought. Hmm. Mm, cancer? Cancer of what? Cancer of what? Ah, okay, look into your family. Are there cancers? No, oh, this discussion goes on in your mind. So if you entertain that thought over a, a period of time, the thought will come into your bed, your living room, enter your bedroom, and be on the same bed with you. Now when you wake up, the cancer wakes up. When you talk, the cancer comes out. So, so it's a, it becomes a mindset, something that is cemented in your thinking. 
So subconsciously, you start thinking you have cancer. And it will come out of your conversation. Once a while, you throw it out. You know, uh, this cancer thing, whenever I hear it, I have issues with it. Uh, I think in our family, cancer is the constant. Before you realize it's coming out of your speech, then it will begin to influence the decisions you take. So that's the nature of expectation. It's a thought. Number two, it becomes what? A mindset. The posture, the direction of your inner being. And then it starts coming out of your mouth. And then it influences your decisions. So, my wife would tell me, they tell the ladies to go through a certain practice each morning when they are taking their shower uh, to detect if there are lumps and all that in places that are not supposed to be. And then they are supposed to report to the hospital for regular checks. But if there is a negative expectation, an expectation which is contrary to God's promise and God's goodness in your life, Anytime you are doing that examination, something is singing in your head. This is a cancer lamp. This is a cancer cell. So you are doing the physical exercise, but at the same time, there's something going on mentally. Within you, there's something that is talking to you. How many of you ladies can understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So even when you are doing that exercise, you do it with fear. There is so much fear. So you may touch something that is not a cancer cell, but in your mind, it's cancer. And it can influence your decision such that you, can, you would decide never to go to a hospital to check. So there are many women that avoid examination. Why? Because the expectation is not good. The, the, what is going on within says is cancer. So you decide not to go to check so that you don't find out what you are expecting. It's a thought. It becomes a mindset. Something that has gained control over you. And then it starts coming out of your speech, your talk. And then it influences the decisions you take. Are you here? Jairus has an expectation. He is expecting Jesus to solve a problem he has. And because of this positive expectation, this positive expectation becomes a mindset. It's not just a thought. Immediately it becomes a mindset. It takes control of you. And it starts coming out of what? Your speech and your decisions. Jairus would tell people in the house, hey guys, I will see you very soon. I have to run after Jesus. I need to look for Jesus in town. I have a big problem, but I need to find Jesus. He will say something, and then there's a decision. He's left the problem at home. That is the only daughter. And he is now heading somewhere looking for Jesus. So look at verse 42. Because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. So Jairus takes a decision that is risky. There's crowds around Jesus. They could crush Jesus, which means all the doors are closed. But his expectation, he's moving his body towards something that is difficult to get. And he's convinced he will overcome the crowd and he'll be able to have access to Jesus. That's the power of expectation. The door is closed. Nothing can happen. But your expectation can move your whole being on a path of possibility. Can you say amen? Why? Because it starts as a thought 
it becomes a mindset and then it will come out of your speech when he met Jesus he spoke he says my girl is dying but come to my house because I know you can solve the problem come and lay your hands upon her and she'll be well she's dying but I know you are the answer to, this, to the problem you are the solution to the problem because your expectation will always come out of your mouth it starts as a thought it becomes a mindset and it can be a mindset within two minutes there is a a cement that can, can that can solidify in few minutes and others take a while those who are into construction you understand so the enemy puts a thought in your mind and you don't resist that negative thought it will gain ground and solidify and now it will begin to come out of your speech and your decisions Jairus says, I have a problem. Yes, big problem. My only daughter is at the point of death. By my expectations, say that there is a solution. Available. There's an available solution. And that's the beauty of God. The God of the Bible has a way of providing for us. The provision of God is always within our reach. Tell the next person, God's provision is always within our reach. Tell the next person, the solution for the problem is just around you. So when the daughter was dying, it's amazing, of all the places Jesus could be, Jesus was in the area. Jesus was in the area. If Jesus was somewhere in another city, we don't know what will happen. But of all the places Jesus could be, he was in the area. Because that's the nature of God's provision. It's always connected around you. It's just something that is just around you. Hallelujah. I love the God of the Bible. So Jairus says, yes, I have a horrible problem. But I'm also persuaded that the provision is available, it's accessible, it's close to me. And that solution is Jesus. Amen. And it the expectation moves his body towards Jesus. And there is a big problem that is a crowd problem around Jesus. The ushering system in Jesus' ministry is not desirable. At this point, people are about to crush Jesus. They are coming on every side. And Jairus believes that I will meet Jesus face to face. Let the crowds multiply, but I will meet him. I'm here to announce to you that your expectation on Christ will not be disappointed. The God will make a way to create a way for you to see the fulfillment of that godly desire, that godly expectation you have. Amen? And when Jairus showed up, indeed, everybody moved away. And Jairus had an encounter. A heavenly encounter. One on one with Jesus. The crowds were there before him. But when he showed up, he had access. That is the power of godly expectation. Positive expectation. Yes. He doesn't know anybody in the crowds. Who is going to speak for me? My problem is a critical problem. I need to meet Jesus now. But I have a barrier of thousands of people on every side surrounding Jesus. But your expectation, the anticipation in you for a better outcome will not be disappointed. I want us to go into the scripture and see this how it plays out as is scripted by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Proverbs chapter 23, verse 18. Proverbs 23, verse 18. Proverbs 23, verse 18.
Are you receiving something? Okay. Let's all read. Ready? Go. There is surely a future hope for you. Your hope will not be cut out. Amen? Let's read it in NKJV. Let's all read. Ready? Go. For surely there is a hereafter. Everybody say hereafter. Say after this meeting. Okay. So hereafter and your hope will not be what? Cut off. NLT. NLT. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let's all read. Ready? Go. For you will be rewarded for this. Your hope will not be disappointed. Tell the next person you will be rewarded for this. Say, sure reward is guaranteed. Say, result is guaranteed. Your hope will not be disappointed. Tell the next person your expectations and anticipation that is positive, that is godly, will not be disappointed. Tell the next person, if you put your expectations on Christ, if you anticipate a better result, a better outcome, and you fix it on Jesus, it will not fail. Your expectations will not be disappointed. Now, let's read in King James. In King James. Same verse in King James. King James Version. We don't have that. How many of you have King James? You have King James. Please stand and read for us. The old king, James. <laughs> uh -huh. Read for us, please, sister. Come. Come and read for us. For surely there's an end. And your expectations shall not be cut off. Say that surely there is an end. Tell me, there is an end to every circumstance on planet earth. But be sure of this. Your expectation will not be disappointed. Will not be cut short. I love the word of God. Ooh. And that's why Satan is trying to get your attention. Pumping all kinds of filth in your mind. Throwing all the toxic waste releasing the sewage, urine and poo poo in your mind put it emailing and she mailing all kinds of evil in your mind because he wants you to start anticipating something evil he wants you to anticipate that things will go wrong he doesn't want you to anticipate what God has promised you he wants you to anticipate all kinds of horror and gloom and discouragement and frustration he wants you to anticipate oppression, bondage, sorrow but he wants you to anticipate all the evil because the devil knows if he can allow you to believe in all the foolish things he's saying, if you are persuaded of those negative things and you start hoping, anticipating for them, those things will, will show up in your life God is also sending you good stuff giving you his promises, assuring you of his love, assuring you of his protection, of his provision, assuring you that things are going to get better. You have the power of choice to choose whether you're going to build a positive expectation or a negative word. Expectation. He will not force it on you. The God of the Bible cannot force you to have a positive expectation. He can only show you his word open his heart to you. Give you examples of what he has done for others whose conditions were worse than you. And he says, in all this now fully be persuaded and convinced that I am a good God and that I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will change what will not change. And ultimately my purpose for your life will be accomplished. You will bring glory to my name and the enemy will be defeated. Tell the next person, I beg you, cooperate with God. Tell him, I beg you, cooperate with the God of the Bible and build positive expectations, good expectations 
not toxic anticipation not toxic expectations because when you build those expectations you have actually signed the contract your expectations are a contract you have what signed either with god or with the devil if two shall agree it shall be done so when the devil keeps throwing the negative things in your mind and you keep letting it in and now you start anticipating that those things will come you have joined the devil to mess up your life though jesus has died on the cross to make every good thing available to you you have actually signed a contract with satan but when you hear the word of god read the word of god and now you start anticipating good things the heavenly things the christ-like experiences to show up in your life you are in agreement you are in contract with god you are in business with god and he will never fail you he will never fail you he will never fail you for surely there's an end stretch your hands towards somebody say i pray and prophesy upon you an end of every circumstance that is contrary to god's design for your life say i declare the end i declare the end of every circumstance or situation in your life which is contrary to what god has designed for your life surely there's an end in jesus name you experience it amen surely there's an end but dying expectation shall not be what cut off it will not be disappointed it will not be what disappointed so you need to trust god to help you anticipate godly things good things i've realized in my interactions with many christians that most things we anticipate is evil is devilish is demonic hardly do you find christians wishing well for other christians hardly do you find a christian who is anticipating a breakthrough a miracle an elevation a restoration for another brother or sister and it leaves me with questions as to what kind of spirit do we have because when we have the spirit of god god is good so what we anticipate must be good it should not be evil i've met christians who were praying for somebody to get saved and after the person got saved they were unhappy they were dissatisfied they're expecting god to punish the person something bad must happen to the person i'm thinking what kind of spirit is this if you have the spirit of god you have goodness in you you have the power of love seated in you because god is love god is god is god is envy jealousy hatred he's love so if god is in you love is in you and how come do you anticipate evil for another person? Because God is a God of hope. Positive. His thoughts about you are good, not evil. To give you a hope and a future. To give you a positive anticipation and a future. That's God. That's the God of the Bible. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is Jesus Christ. He's a God of hope. When he comes into your life, he downloads in you seeds that helps you anticipate for a better outcome. Which is hope. So when you become a believer, one of the jewels of virtues God downloads in you is this ability to cultivate an anticipation to have an expectation of a better word outcome so before you got saved 
if there's any challenge or problem, you start panicking and you start thinking that something bad is going to happen. But when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, you will show up in your life. Something old must be broken. Are you here with me? Tell the next person it's not a setback, it's a setup for something new. Amen. So, as a believer, at all times, you are constantly anticipating for something good. Is that okay? So if your mic breaks, you don't say, oh, that's over. Uh, we closed the service. Let's go home. You say, it's an opportunity for a new mic. Amen. Always positive, anticipating that something good is going to emerge from that gloomy situation. Amen. At all times. And after Satan does that to you for about two weeks, he will tell all the demons, don't bother this guy. Don't bother the sister. Because if you mean it for evil, God will turn it for good for him. Amen. Whatever the, whatever the devil throws at you becomes a weapon against him. Hallelujah. Tell the next person your expectations will not be disappointed. Hallelujah. Your expectations will not be disappointed. Queen, your expectations will not be disappointed. The Lord is a faithful God and he will reward you. Amen? Tell the next person, don't give up because your expectations will not be disappointed. Galatians 6, 9 to 10. Galatians 6, 9 to 10. Galatians 6, 9 to 10. Please, I want the song ministers to come because we are almost done. 6, 9 to 10. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not what? Give up. NLT, 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 NLT. Let's all read. Ready, go. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. Just as just at just the right time. Tell the next person the right time. We will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. So my question is, if you give up, what will happen? You reap a harvest of burdens. Because the opposite of blessing is burdens. But if you don't give up, you reap a harvest of what? Blessing. So if I'm the devil... I will want your burdens to increase and your, bur your blessings to what? Decrease. So my ministry is to give you a reason to what? Give up. So at all times, Satan will be ministering things that will cause you to what? To give up. Because if you give up, you will miss the harvest of what? Come on. If you give up, you miss the harvest of what? If you give up, what do you miss? The harvest of what? Bless. Harvest means plenty. Plentitude. Profuse. Abundance. There's an abundance of blessing. There's a blessing called the harvest of blessing. Where one blessing leads to another. One blessing leads to another. It's a, it's a multiplicity of blessings. A combination of blessing. A baptism of blessing. A believer will miss this if they easily what? Give up. But we don't give up naturally like that. It's an influence that causes us to give up. And that influence will come through words, thoughts, and actions we see. So he, the enemy is going to throw a thought in your mind. He's going to cause somebody to say something to you. He's going to create a circumstance and you're going to see something. And then suddenly you begin to hear Get ready for the worst. Get ready for the worst. Uh, you think your bank account is in a coma. It's going to die by tomorrow. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. So this anticipation that something bad is going to happen is an agreement you have signed with the devil to have access to any sphere of your life. And two shall agree. You and the devil has agreed. It will be done. But if you're a believer in Christ Jesus... And understand what we are learning. You realize expectations are powerful. 
It's an invitation. An expectation is an agreement with God or with the devil. So now you say, wait a minute, Satan. What did God promise me? And you go into the word of God and said, and you read and it says, God so loved the world. He gave his only son. Whosoever believes in him will not perish. Meanwhile, the devil has convinced you, you are perishing. Your business is going to perish. Your children are going to perish. Your family is going to perish. Your finances is going to perish. And then you read. He said, whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The God kind of life. So at that point, you say, Satan, wait a minute. I'm not going to anticipate that I'm going to perish. I'm going to start expecting the best of life. Because the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that I would have what? Life. And have it what? In abundance. So suddenly you start expecting that things will improve. That there will be enhancement. There will be change. There will be reversals of wrong patterns or demonic patterns. Then the Holy Spirit and the angels of God sees that as a contract you have signed. And now they show up. Moving mountains out of the way, breaking barriers, turning tables around, changing hearts, and manifesting the goodwill of God in your life. Amen? Are you learning something? Beautiful. If you give up, you miss the harvest of what? Blessing. And the last time I shared with you in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 7, uh, 2 Chronicles 15 and verse 7. How many of you remember that? 2 Chronicles 15 and verse 7. It was a time of distress in Israel. No true God, no teaching priest, no law, no love. But as for you, the scripture says, be strong and what? Courageous. For your work will be what? Rewarded. Your work will be rewarded. Tell the next person, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Amen? Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. Hebrews 6 verse 10. Hebrews 6 verse 10. Are you being blessed? Hebrews 6 verse 10. I love the scripture. I love the word of God. For God is not unjust. God is not what? unjust to forget how hard you have worked you have what worked for him tell the next person work for God tell the next person work for God he's not unjust to forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have what shown your love to him you have shown your love what to him how do we show our love to God by caring for other what? Believers. By cursing other believers. Come on, talk to me. Do we show our love to God by cursing other believers? By criticizing other believers? By caring for what? Other believers. So if a person says they love God, how do you know they love God? They care for other believers. They don't curse other believers. They don't crush other believers. They don't criticize other believers. They care for them. Your love for God is seen in your love for his family, his children. You can't say you love me when you hate my child. If you hate my child, uh, uh, you are a suspect. When I see you, I start applying the blood of Jesus and asking the angels to be active. So if you say you love God, it's going to be seen in the way you relate and connect with his children. The same blood of Jesus that saved you, saved that brother. The same blood of Jesus that saved that sister, saved you. You are in God's family. You are all God's children. And if you love him, it must reflect in the way you treat his children. In any circumstance or situation. If Jesus invested his blood to save that person, he saw the reason. He saw there is something good to save that person for. Are you here with me? God will not forget how hard you've worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. He will not forget. 
tell the next person, reward is coming. He will reward you. Your expectations will not be disappointed. Amen? Your expectations will not be disappointed. Tell the next person, your expectations will not be disappointed. Hold on. Don't give up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 36. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 36. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 36. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand and read the scripture. Thank you, Father. What a God. Let's all read. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings. This confident trust in the Lord will bring you great what? It will bring you great what? If you throw this confident trust away, you miss a great what? Reward. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Read the NIV. Let's read the NIV. So do not throw away your what? Confidence. It will be what? Come on. It will be. <laughs> and you think the devil will clap for you? and encourage you to get a rich reward? No. He's going to throw lemons at you all the time and you make lemonade out of it. You determine that I'm anticipating for the fulfillment of God's promise in my life. Amen. You go to Luke chapter 8 and verse 43. Luke chapter 8 verse 43 don't lose your expectations your trust in the Lord a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years but no one could heal her that woman also came to Jesus he came to Jesus it's an expectation that has drawn her to Jesus he, she also has an expectation so you have a problem, others have problems. You have an expectation, others have an expectation. This lady has a positive expectation. If I touch, I'll be healed. I will not wait for him to touch me. I will touch him. And when I touch him, my problems will be solved. Jairus has also come with a positive word, expectation. That he's going to come to my house, lay his hands on my daughter, and they will be healed. Now, how many of you have read the Bible to know both of them had their expectations fulfilled? You are not different from them. You are not different from them. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same Jesus who reached out to these people will reach out to you. Shake off all the junk that the devil has downloaded in your mind. Partner with God in believing what he has written about you, what he has said about you. And hold fast to that expectation for it shall be greatly rewarded. As for you, be strong and don't give up for your expectations. Your work will be rewarded. Expectations will be rewarded. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 35 and 36. Hebrews 10, 35, 36. Do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly what? Rewarded. And look at verse 36. Let's all read. Ready? Go. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you receive what he has promised. I want you to go around and touch four people. Tell them, don't give up. Persevere persevere don't give up persevere persevere don't give up persevere persevere don't give up move forward 
Don't give up. Persevere. Persevere. Continue the good work. Hold fast to the good work. Focus on the good work. Focus on doing good. Uphold the word of God. Stand strong and firm in what Jesus has accomplished for you. Hold on. Don't give up. He said, after you've done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. You will receive what he has promised. Tell the next person, you will receive what he has promised. If you don't give up, move on. Tell the next person, move on. Move on. Hallelujah. You will receive what he has promised. You have need of patience. Look at the old King James. We don't have it here, but look at the new King, a new um, NKJV. Huh? Let's look at NKJV. It says, for you have need of what? Endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Look at the NIV. NIV. Love the word of God. You need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you obtain the promise. Amen. The old King James says, you have need of patience. Patience. Tell the next person, all it takes is time. Tell the next person, all it takes is time. Tell the next person, I will invite you to my celebration party very, very soon. So take my number after church. The best is coming to my home. Hallelujah. Is a positive anticipation. Don't throw it away because it will be greatly rewarded. If you go to Luke 8 and you read down what you realize that Jesus enters Jairus' house and said, Girl, arise. How many of you remember that? And the funeral turned into celebration. <laughs> Somebody is going to attend your celebration very soon. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> they think it's a doom, but that doom is taking you up to the greatest glory you have ever tasted. That big problem is going to produce a fantastic testimony. And all who wish you evil will hear it and go to bed early. <laughs> Hallelujah. They will have a nervous breakdown when God turned what was meant for your destruction for your elevation. That big problem is a big testimony. That horrible situation is a beautiful miracle. Can you receive that? Thank you, Jesus. So you don't give up. You hold on. He will show up. He will show. There's an end to every matter. There is an end. And at the end, your Savior will show up. Your Deliverer will show up. Your Great Provider will show up. The Mighty One of Zion will show up. Amen. He will show up. He will show up. He will show up. Job said, Satan, hit my body touch my family hit anything you want to hit but there is an end to the matter my expectations will not be disappointed my expectations will not be disappointed God is speaking to you child of God you are listening to the voice of your heavenly father it's the third month it's the third month of the year and you are not going down he that has upheld you till now is going to see you through the whole year He's going to see you through. Not the gloom, but the glory. The best is yet to come. You have the worst behind you. You have exhausted the worst. He sent me here to announce to you, get ready for the best. Get ready for the best. You've exhausted the worst. You have the best ahead of you. Hold fast to that confident trust you have in Jesus. He will not fail. Jairus daughter is alive again your daughter will live again your son will live again that dream God gave you will bounce back strong nobody in the family tree 
has ever experienced the miracle Jairus experience you are unique you are different your destiny is deep and heavy and the deeper and the stronger your destiny is the more complex the difficulties are your destiny determines your difficulties but there's a deluge of faith and glory God will surround you with you are bringing a transgenerational blessing Jairus is dead the daughter is dead but that testimony is changing lives that work God did in that house is still changing many homes and many houses you'll be dead and gone but your expectations you did not give up will still be ministering to cities and communities and countries and nations don't lose that expectation the Holy Spirit sent me to tell you don't you hold on hold fast hold fast to that expectation somebody's waiting for that expectation to be raised from the dead God is going to save you of headaches and save you even of money people were preparing for the funeral but Jesus saved them of funeral cost that girl rose up again no funeral cost he will save you financially when you commit to him can you say this after me say consistent commitment to Christ Jesus create capacity to conquer all challenges say that again consistent commitment to Christ Jesus create capacity to conquer all challenges say Lord I hold fast to you I hold out to your hand I put my trust in you my expectations are in you Lord you are my light and my salvation my portion forever I will not give up I will hold on to you till I see your glory. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Somebody pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. And I receive your life. I declare that you died for me. And you rose again to bring me a new life. Today, I recognize you. As my own, as my, as your own, as my owner, you are my owner, you are my Lord, my God forever, and the only Savior of my life. I receive you and I thank you for giving me your life. Your spirit lives in me. I have positive hope, positive anticipation for a better outcome. I will see you face to face one day but before that day I declare I'm more than a conqueror through consistency and commitment to you I conquer all challenges in your name and bring you all the glory and the praise in Jesus name Amen